And they'll need to get some goals going this season. As the Kentucky defense that we highlighted in the open hasn't been itself lately. You've got to credit the opposition. But here we go, Kentucky in the home white. Coastal Carolina in the green. I'm sure that's probably an emerald or something like that. It's not just green with the black trim. I like that color combination. I'm interested to see if Coastal Carolina actually comes out in that formation. Had it listed as the 4-4-2 there. We've seen them play with three in the back a lot this season. And Coastal has the first possession. We actually got snowflakes in the Lexington area last night. The temperature at game time is 50. It could be down near 40 by the end of the game. And there has been a pretty strong wind, even though the flag is still right now pretty much most of the day. They say the wind is at seven miles an hour. And Bjorgelson wins one in the air. And now Grasso gets one in the back. And as we get started tonight, oh, look, we've got Brown's <laughs> Basics. What a feature there. Uh, Come on, Josh, uh, let's go. Hey, credit to the production team pulling that together. I think for Coastal Carolina, they're going to have to transition quickly. When they get a chance to break, they've got to move forward with pace, try and catch this Kentucky team flat-footed, which we've seen a couple of times in these past few games for the Wildcats. And on set pieces, they've got to put them away as well. For Kentucky, stay patient, possess. We've seen them possess a ton with different teams they've played against, and then frustrate the big guy up top. We talked about him in the open, Garcia Pascal. We gotta make sure to stay in front of him. Wildcats in the attack area. That was nicely played by Granning here. Screen, and that one is taken care of by the diving Batroni. We've seen it time and time again this season. In the broadcast you've covered, Dave, screen, he's comfortable overlapping or coming underneath the wing midfielder and exchanging. And he and Gutman on that side are gonna be really fun to watch and see how their dynamic works and how they're gonna be creative tonight. Both teams. Trying to see how the other will react in certain situations. Remember, the last time the Wildcats were home, a week ago against Dayton, they gave up their first goal 58 seconds in. And so they're just trying to put it together here tonight. They jump out to a 2-0 lead, or excuse me, they fall behind to Dayton 2-0, and they come back to do a 2-2 draw and against West Virginia, they gave up two early, uh, they scored two early goals and still finished with a draw. A screen goes to the left foot. Cats one of five unbeaten teams in the country. Uh, when the new coaches poll came out, they were tied in the second spot with Duke. Washington, who is one of those other teams without a loss, I think they're like 14-0-1. Yeah, they... They have been ridiculous this year, just that one draw. And they are number one. Yeah, serving the national championships. And first corner kick of the night, and it's Enzo Marie's with the left foot. So Rida got a head on it. And they say it was deflected. Storin Socha, our referee making that call tonight. He's joined by Christopher Schur, friends, and Jeremiah Jemison. Chad Collins is our alternate, and that's a great ball into the box. And that looked like Grasso, who went up and just couldn't get it on frame. Grasso, always a good target to try and get off the corner kick here. And Maurice, we've seen so often with excellent service into the box. We know Coach Johan Sedergren is going to want to take advantage of those set pieces. He, I think he knows that this Coastal Carolina team has been susceptible at times to set pieces off free kicks and corners like that. And I, th I think that's unusual because of the fact that Coastal is a really big team. Normally teams like that are generally good 
on the set pieces. They have a lot of height and a player up top. I mean, they've got a guy who's 6'8", who plays up top for them, comes on occasionally, or he's actually starting tonight, number 11, Santos. He doesn't get the start every time for Coastal Carolina. He started five games this year. He's certainly capable of scoring, but he'll be playing defensively as well on those corner kicks, trying to match up against guys like Grosso and Bjorgolfsson for Kentucky. No Santos listed officially on the roster at 6'8". He looks all of 6'8 <laughs> right? as well. It's not like basketball where they give everybody a couple of extra <laughs> inches. They're probably, probably underestimating him. And here's a look at Coastal season. One win in the last nine matches, but all those draws. They've been able to share the sugar. And that's a phrase coined by my buddy Cliff Ellis, who's entering his 49th season coaching college basketball. I met him when he was at Auburn. And of course now, that's a great shot to the front and kicked out of there. Ellis getting ready to start his 16th season as head basketball coach at Coastal. I think a head-to-head -head collision there. Petroni still down and they're gonna give a yellow card. And that's gonna go against Casper Grinning. Challenging there, just kind of incidental contact. A little surprised to see the card come out in that situation. Yeah, I think he left his foot in there, was trying to stab at the ball. Take another look right here. So this is a great shot, great save. I mean, he did get there late, but it's kind of kind of one of those bang bangs and a judgment call by Storin Socha. And it goes down as our first yellow. Foul will go against Coastal, and the Cats will have possession right back. Looking at the shape for Coastal, it does look like when they defend, they settle with five backs. Five defenders back there and four midfielders in front, and just no San Santos playing the lone striker pressuring the Wildcat back line. And we had a feeling that might be the case. This team would sit back very low in the field, not pressure high against the Wildcats, and just kind of absorb some pressure. It was just something to watch out for whenever you see them switch into that defensive shape, get behind the ball. You're gonna have at least nine guys behind the ball. No whistle there. And here comes Coastal. Man open down front and that ball was blocked. And it goes across the end line. And that's gonna be a corner. Here's a look at Wildcats head coach Johan Sedegren in his 11th season. He's a man who's accustomed to cold weather, so when you see him bubble up like that, you get an idea just how nippy it is tonight. He kind of figured he had almost reached the peak of his coaching prowess with this Kentucky team in years past, but getting that number two ranking, just finding another way. That's an outstanding corner kick. And that was Itor Chartinson. And the Wildcats still unable to clear it out of their own end. And now Moles will be able to do that after Schnaggen. And that's something Kentucky is going to have to deal with throughout the night. Occasionally, Coastal is going to get these opportunities off corner kicks and free kicks. And they've shown they can put some away from those set pieces. And Kentucky, the past two games, like we've mentioned, they struggled with that a little bit, just kind of turned off mentally on right. a few of them. They've got to stay locked in all 90. There's the freshman Miller who's had such an outstanding season. Sarita getting the start in the mid again tonight. Holstad tried to play it up to screen and too far. And there's Sean Docking. What a career he's had. He starts his 29th season 
as the head coach at Coastal. See where he ranks in all-time wins in the NCAA as well, 17th all-time. Great coach for this program, and they've been really prolific in years past as well. This year, kind of had to play a little bit more defensively, I think, than they would like to. And remember, the Sun Belt has changed dramatically. Of course, Coastal coming over with Kentucky. Last time these two teams played, it was a Kentucky victory in the first round of the conference tournament a year ago. And really interesting. I'm watching Coastal defensively, and they're marking Enzo Marie's with a man. They are literally man marking him. I don't usually see that. Usually it's zonal, but Marie's is getting shadowed all over the no field. No question. Kentucky's had a lot of success playing through him. It's going to be Lucio Barone shadowing him all game long. It looks like that's, that's a tactic you don't see all the time. Most teams are going to settle in and kind of play more of a zonal defensive scheme. That's just how the game is played now. But he's fallen Marie's everywhere. Uh, I'm sure Maurice is going to try and sneak through every once in a while, but that's a, a interesting strategy from Coastal early. So once again, Kartenson, he finds Emil Rezpecki. And that ball headed away for a moment. Again, another deflection. Chanticleers wanted a handball, but no doing. And it looks like it'll be a corner. Nice quick movement to get the ball forward. This is what they like to do, put some service in. You get a deflection like this, it can come out. That's very good technique on the strike there. I think that was Marcelo Jones lacing one up from there. Not a bad effort. Rodriguez got his body in front of it. And now Kjartansson will take the corner from the far side. That one knocked out of there nicely. Jorgelson was a man who got ahead on it. And look at him running past everybody. Miller has got some speed. And if that ball hadn't been taken out of bounds, the Wildcats would have definitely had something going. So an excellent play there by Rizpecki. What a run there from Miller. And that time, because of the corner kick on the opposite side of the field, just decided to have a run. He's got that freedom at that outside back spot to take it on 1v1 every once in a while. He said good recovery there from Coastal to stop that counterattack. That's always dangerous off those corner kicks. You've got all your guys up in the box wanting to get a header, and then got to track back very quickly, especially against a team like these Wildcats. So here's screen. Now they play it in the center of the pitch. Little chip. And that was a nice play by Baltroni as Gutman just tried to lob one in there. We saw Garcia Pascual dropping back in there, connecting. And that's what he's so good at, in addition to scoring goals. Just holding play up for this team. He's so strong and physical. And look, he can start to build the attack for them, allow them to get some outlets and switch the point of attack. He's just as valuable moving the ball for them as he is scoring it. No question. So we're coming up on the 13-minute mark in this scoreless affair. As we said, at the top of this broadcast, both of these teams really hoping to get three. That ball across the top of the crease and finally booted out of there by Miller and watch him on this run coming up. Guy is incredibly fast and a good decision by Coastal. The layback instead of challenging. So right on the far side gets to that ball. And 
And now Screen has it punched away. But the Wildcats get it back. You can see that last coastal win a long, long time ago, Dave. 2002, the last time the Chanticleers were able to get a win against this Wildcats team. That's uh, a long time coming. I'm sure they're, they've got that little bit of history in mind and all the draws this year, I'm sure they are pleased to get sure. some of these draws against big teams, but they're also thinking, hey, how can we get a goal in one of these games against like a Marshall or a West Virginia or here against UK? It's gotta come from one of those two guys up top, those big guys we've already talked about. Tony plays it up. move at the top and they go to the back post and nobody home. And Miller has looked so exciting early. We've seen him throughout the year, not afraid to take the defense on and make that overlap from his left back position. And that's gonna be important, switching the ball early, getting it to either Miller or screen on the other side to start the attack for the Wildcats. They can't be content with just possessing around the back. They've got to get those two moved forward as much as they can. And Kentucky trying to create from the back once again. The chess match developed. Marie's playing way farther out wide than where we're used to seeing him. Usually he'll play underneath Bjorgelsen right in the center of the field. And I think they're taking that man marking that Coastal's doing and saying, okay, you're gonna man mark me. I'm gonna stand all the way on the other side of the field and see if I can open up other options for my teammates. Grinning with a pass that went too far. Kentucky's taken three shots, got one on goal. Coastal with two shots. They haven't gotten one on frame. That a long lift. And Noah Glorioso. Maybe getting a bit antsy. That's going to be the continued recipe for Coastal Carolina. Get the ball, break early, get your wingers bombing forward and put some service into the box. It's not going to connect every time. If a goal comes, it's going to come from one of those plays, one of those transition moments. Miller goes back to Grosso and now they'll look to switch to field. Rodriguez with a nifty step, and now he has some grass in front of him. Back to Rodriguez, trying to poke it in. I don't think he knew whether to blast it or just kind of pass it, and he did something kind of in between. Certainly caught in two minds there, wasn't sure which one to do. Kentucky has certainly had the best of play here early on, but not a lot to show for it. is exactly what we sort of expected to see. Kentucky keeping possession, moving it around. They're going to get the majority of the possession in this game. For Coastal, it's all about absorbing that as much as possible. And then when you get the chance to break and get these set pieces, long throws, that's where the attack will come from. And for people that haven't been following along all season long, everybody's got different things to do and things like that. But, you know, certainly, all these draws this year in part have to be attributed to the fact that there is no extra time in regular season soccer for men or women this year. It's one of the safety things that coaches and those who make the rules took a look at. So it'll be back in the postseason, but 
It's only 90 minutes in the regular season, and whatever it is, it is. Miller controls it. And I think those getting rid of extra time and going ahead and just calling it a draw, I mean, kind of synchronizing with the way the rest of the world does it, right, in the professional ranks. So I don't think it's going to affect the players too much. You'll see a lot more draws like we see with Coastal Carolina as a result, but that's kind of how it goes. You've got to play and try and get some goals if you want to get that win in those three points. Ball in the air. One by Coastal. Nice job by Garcia Pascal. Garcia Pascal. This is going to be constant throughout the game. Hold up play. He's got that big body, shield it. A, a basketball phrase, boxing out the defenders, really just using his body well. Uh, and he'll hold a play, win a free kick, and that's exactly what you want from him. That's what we've seen all season from this talented forward. It's only the second foul of the game, one against each team. Team with a couple of corners. So while we talked about the goals Kentucky has given up, as we've said before this year, uh, there may not be maybe some of the dynamic players that they've had in the past, like a, a May Mabika or J.J. Williams, but as a team, they are getting it done offensively, as evidenced by those 22 goals in the last six matches got a lot of different players who can score and assist and get on that stat sheet and a, a couple players now who have really taken that next step throughout the course of this kind of second half of the season I've been really impressed by the wing play you look at Grenning and Gutman they have been so dynamic and it seemed like Grenning earlier in the season he couldn't find the back of the net for the longest time and finally connecting now there's Gutman Ball was knocked away, they say play on. Maurice tried to crank with a right foot on a ball that he couldn't settle. And back come the Chanticleers the other way. Centered to the back post. The Wildcats couldn't make contact in the air. And you see Robert's screen right there, and I think you've got to credit Coastal in terms of their scouting report. Kentucky has played an awful lot through screen. Uh, he's a guy down the far side that really has been able to serve it well into the box, and they have really clamped down on him intentionally here in the first half. So great hearing the story of him being more of a central player, played a little bit more forward in his career in years past. And that ball across the box. My goodness. Bjorgelson just couldn't quite square it up. Well, what a feed from Casper Grin. That's the right idea. And as we're talking about screen, he starts it. Oh, Goodman right there. Goodman and Grenning, I tell you, they've got great connection there. Bjorkelson's going to make the first run in. Grenning's always lurking there on the back post. And you've always got to be aware of. Yeah, so it was it was Gutman and Grenning. You are right. My mistake. Gutman's service has been outstanding this year. He's really step up, stepped up in that outside mid roll and made it his own. Just past the midway point here in period number one. Wendell and Vicky Bell soccer complex on the UK campus. Dave Baker, Josh Brown here with you. As that ball goes to the top of the box in the back. Sunbelt conference action tonight. Between Coastal Carolina and Kentucky, the Wildcats tied for number two in the latest poll of the nation with Duke just behind the unbeaten Washington Huskies. Ryder keeps it in. And a 
nice switch by Holstead. I think Screen wanted a handball. I think the crowd did too. I, I feel like I saw an arm come up there. Screen was trying to flick it past, and he did flick it in the air to get past the defender, but the referee didn't see it. It was a fair distance away as well. Hard one to determine. Holstead checked out front by Rez Pecky. Now he closes on him again. Here's Sarita. Somebody's got to be out of position. Can they take advantage of it? Flip back to Miller from Bjorgelson. And Miller has it taken away and then commits the foul. Yeah, Miller kind of got caught in the crowd there. Took a long touch into two players. And the Wildcats, though, staying patient, just possessing. And like you said, they were starting to pull Coastal out of position, just getting them out of that shape that they've got pretty much all their players behind the ball. It's a nice step in and take away by Holstad that got the Cats this possession back. Gutman controls that one nicely. Play by Grasso. Excellent hustle. Poked it out of bounds and stopped the run. Excellent tackle. You always take a little bit of a risk when you leave your feet and put the slide in. A perfectly timed. I, I love seeing that type of challenge. Glorioso has some pace. Grasso had to get that one right. Miller, then Sarita win it in the air. And now the Cats come out of there with it. Screen to Gutman to Bjorgelson. He's got Grenning and Gutman. And now here's Grenning. Working 1v1. Top of the box. And that went off a defender. My goodness. That looked like it was Lewis Bach. And that may have been the Cats' best offensive chance of the night. That was a great play. Grenning. Everybody knows he wants to cut onto his right to put the shot on frame. Instead, going to his left, excellent driven cross across the face of goal. That's that danger area where you want to put it in and almost bounced out perfectly to Maurice. And like you said, excellent defensive effort to get in the way on that one from Coastal. That was one of the few times we've seen Kentucky able to break. Coastal was caught out of their shape a little bit and Bjorgolfsson led the charge. Another chance, there's Screen. And that one in the air knocked away. Wow. And that would be Dieter Dull, Durrell, Dieter Durrell, Peter Durrell rather, excuse me, who is not happy about the defense in front of him. Perfect though. A screen and Gutman on that side are so dynamic. It's hard to know, okay, is screen about to sprint and overlap? My my wing midfielder I'm marking, is he going to come underneath? Is he gonna stop and try and play a cross in? It's very hard to defend, but. So the referee there talking to Bjorgelson and to Marcelo Jones. You've got Marie's ready to take a corner from the far left. That's a beautiful ball. Way up in the air. Goes Batroni to knock it out. Back to the top of the box. And Bjorgelson got a head on it, but couldn't square it up. Good, brave goalkeeping there from Batroni. You've got to be assured when you come off your line in those situations. Excellent service by Marie's in a really tough spot. The goalkeeper was big there to punch that out. 
17, Danny Cabrera checks in to the coastal lineup. Replaces No Santos. That's our first substitution of the game here in the 27th minute. Screen with a battle and he retains possession. With that sub for Santos coming off, they lose that big target forward up top. So maybe a little bit different look for Coastal as they try and break out. I think they're gonna push Garcia Pascal up a little bit more and play that target forward role instead. Of course, we know he's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Rodriguez, that ball touched by Bjorgelson and he got it back. And Kentucky for the most part has been in the coastal end of the pitch for the biggest portion of this first period. I would love to see the possession stats after this first half. It's It's got to be something like 60, 65% to UK. Coastal just putting all those bodies behind the ball. They will really pack it back in. They'll defend with seven, and they're perfectly content to sit back. And here's the firepower this week, uh, this year for the Wildcats. That goal differential, always a good sight. And you compare it to last year as well. Wildcats were getting good wins. They were not scoring this much. No. They have scored so much this year. And like you mentioned, I, th I think you mentioned about 10 minutes ago or so, They've done it with so many different players. Mm -hmm. Any of these guys can get on the score sheet. I mean, heck, Grisseau had a, an excellent volley against West Virginia to score off of a set piece. So when your center back scoring uh, volleys like that in the box, that's always a good sign. You know something's clicking with your offense. Coming up on the 30th minute in this scoreless affair. Tried to go to Bjorgelson. Miller gets it back. He had a little room. Now the feed to Holstad. Back to Miller. There's Bjorgelson in front. That ball knocked away. Maurice couldn't get squared up. My goodness, another trip with an outstanding Kentucky chance that's turned back by the Chanticleers. The Coastal doing just enough, right? It seems like they're just hanging on enough on that final ball that they repel it away at the last second. Miller, outstanding individual effort there. Nutmeg with the pass and then was able to follow it through off the one two. Almost created that all on his own. Here's Grosso. And that's a nice feed into the attack area. Ball in front and a sliding Bjorgelson can't connect. Wildcats keep it in. That was Miller from the near side with that excellent centering pass. And now they look to set it up again. Once again, they go Miller. They like the matchup. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't switch the field a couple of times and bring it back to the near side. Instead, they go to Screen who tried to back heel. Ball still loose into the box. And that ball deflected off the defender. And again, that's Peter Durrell for a corner. And I know Kentucky is comfortable in possession, but Luca Rodriguez is in the opponent's box, casually in possession. Oh, yeah. He made a great run up there and was asking for that ball back. Kentucky is pressing everybody up. They know they can keep possession and the center backs are gonna be up on this corner kick for sure. I think every one of these corners has taken place from the far side. That's why Maurice kicks the in swinger. And that one is punched away by Batroni. Still though, not clear yet. Cats keep it in. Goodman looking for some help. And Sarita able to take it away. This time they take it away from Gutman. And Screen gets in position on the far side. That 
combination play from Kentucky with either of their outside backs, whether it's Screen or Miller, it's, it's been effective. They have been able to make that run forward and really put some crosses into the box. It seems like a, a matter of of if, of when and not if with all of these attacks that they're creating. Grinning. And now once again the Cats build from the back. A lot of the action has run through Grosso and Miller here on this near side in the second half of this first period. And there they go again. And Grosso and Rodriguez are getting so high up the field now. When Kentucky has long spells of possession like this, one of those center backs can move up. I mean, Coastal, this is the opportunity where they have to try and break. And that's going to be a foul and a whistle. And somebody's going to get a card. Or Grosso's going to get a warning. There you see Rodriguez all tangled up there with Danny Cabrera. And then our referee. Pulling Grosso. And a shunt to clear aside for more conversations. That was Soren Stocia saw something he obviously didn't like. Yeah, that's one of those situations where he doesn't want to give a card right there, but he's he's kind of telling Grosso, hey, let's calm your guys down a little bit. That was a clear break for Coastal. They took him down hard, prevented the counterattack. I think that's kind of a next time that, that type of challenge is going to be yellow. 24, Alex Kinnateter. A senior from Mallorca, Spain, checks into the Kentucky lineup. For Kentucky, Casper Grenning comes out. Hydor Bjorgelson comes out. It's about the time when these two get a break in the first half. Trey Asensio comes in for Max Miller. Ben Damji comes in for Grenning. And Brennan Creek on for Bjorgelson. So a new look for the Wildcats up top. Very capable substitutes as well. We know, we've seen Ben Damji have some really outstanding games, get on the stat sheet a ton this year. And Creek has a lot of pace. He, he can get behind and he's put in some good balls into the box for some assists this season. Damji had a hat trick, of course, in that six nothing win here over Georgia Southern. And flag is up and Marie's was offsides. Creek going to play in that left mid position and Damji running up top. That's that's a nice luxury having Damji come on for Bjorgolfsson, two guys that can put the ball away in a hurry. Well, that's part of part of building an overall program when you've got that depth because you never know when you're going to need it. Back come the Cats, far side, and they tried to leave it out top. Creek was there, but couldn't get to it. Surprised not to see the foul there. It seems like Kentucky pulled, pulled another attacker down on the counter, but gives him a good chance to start building again. They play through Maurice, what a nice pass. Top of the box and nobody's home. That was an excellent center over there by screen. Seems time and time again from those outside backs. That ball's loose in front. Damji with a left foot. And he got it right on frame. 
but took it right at the keeper, Batroni. I think a great descriptor for Damji is opportunistic. That one dropped down off of kind of a whiffed clearance from Coastal, and he just took it on. You see that hat trick that we talked about against Georgia Southern. First time that had happened in nine years. As the Wildcats beat Southern that night, six nothing. Again, to get that from a substitute player who's not going to start the games for you. That is such a tool to have in your arsenal. And we know he can step up and he can score. He's kind of got that poacher mentality, just in the right spot and, like I said, opportunistic. Down into the corner. And too far for Creek. So Ryder's gonna get called for the push off. That was just a little too obvious. And not enough players between he and Soren Sochi, our referee. It was Garcia Pascal again, dropping back, holding the defense off, and you're gonna give away fouls like that eventually. It's very hard to get around that player. He is a big guy up there, as we've highlighted a couple times already. And that shielding, he's just able to hold guys off almost at will. Into the 39th minute. And substitution for the Wildcats. Fan favorite, another Lexington guy, Taco Simpasi. As you look at another freshman, Casper Moles. They were doing the whole keeper rotation thing, but I think this is now either the third or fourth consecutive start for Moles. It seems like he's really shored up that position now and made it his own. And you kind of look back at the past Ooh. couple of games that he's been in goal and you're like, well, he started, but he gave up five goals. And sometimes as a fan, you just see the stat line right. and you think, okay, maybe he shouldn't be the starting keeper. But not, not all those goals are his fault, right? There's a lot of defensive work and I think mental mistakes that th there was nothing he could do on a lot of those saves in those games. It's gonna be a foul against Glorioso. So this will be the A start of the year for Moles. Jack Ryan has started twice. And Isaac Walker had five starts before they settled in on Moles. Ball deflected. No, the reality is, Dave, we don't get to see training either. Casper Moles could be just the best keeper in training and proved himself time and time again in practice and might have won Johan Sedergren over. So we, do, we just don't know if that's the, that's the determiner or not. And we're, we're not at the practices, so <laughs> we can't know. Here's Rodriguez. Little two-man game, and now they go to Simpasi. He tried to center. It was deflected, and it'll be a corner. Kentucky racking up the corner kicks. The, the, the attacks have come from the wing. He just interchanged. Can you see how high Rodriguez is again on that replay? Rodriguez on the edge of the 18. Your center back coming up, interchanging. You know he's pretty good with his feet. Simpasi with the darting run through. Passe able to release got past the much bigger Bach. And now here's Maurice again from the far side of the pitch with the left-footed corner. That's a good one. Right to the top of the box. And it was headed away by Respaki as Damji was in position and a whistle behind the play. And I'm not sure what this is about. It's a good, smart, quick free kick there from Coastal. They had players running forward, ready to break and transition. I really like that idea. I think it was Cabrera who set it down and just tried to launch it. And you can see Coastal pleading their case a little bit. And, and what they do is Coastal is known 
for getting the ball and going as quick as they yep. can. There you see our alternate Chad Collins explaining things to Sean Docking. I can tell you it's frustrating as a player when you're ready to just go play that free kick and then the referee whistles it back like that to kind of reset things. Battle down into the corner and they say it was won by the Wildcats. As it went off the foot of Cabrera. Damji controls as we've hit 43 minutes gone by in a scoreless affair. Nice ball from Holstad, and he tried to slip it in there. Who was that, Damji that fell? No, check it, that was Creek. That ball is centered to the far post. And that was a good run, two defenders back, but Maurice got behind him and he likes it on the left foot. Screen again, so much good work from the right side of the field. This time with the left, and Maurice, the reason he's got two defenders on him, I mean, it's like his shadow. I've been so impressed with the defensive work from Lucio Barone, following him all over the field. So you saw Barone and a defender on him, two guys just blanketing him. The only time Maurice has had a chance to breathe is when he goes out and takes those corner Whoa. kicks. And again, credit Coastal. It has certainly uh, slowed Kentucky's attack. And now for Johan Sedergren and company, they're going to have to figure out exactly what they do in period number two. Only two shots for Coastal. They've not gotten one on goal yet. Kentucky with six shots. They've gotten two on frame as we're into the final 30 seconds. Final 10 eight, seconds and the Wildcats seven, just looking six, to play it out. Five, four, three, Not a surprise at all zero, with two teams that have an amazing number of draws between them. That we He's got his arm around the fellow with a beard. Just got a little tweak tonight. And normally he's in there with the likes of Maurice and company and that gives them one more person to mark. And perhaps that's why so much attention is being paid to Marie's. Usually we see that long blonde hair flowing in the wind. Yeah. Him and Holstad have some good flow in the center of the pitch. And so here we go in period number two. As Josh mentioned, 65% of the possession in period number one. Handled by the Wildcats. And a lot of that coming in the attacking third for the Wildcats or in the middle of the field. Hardly anything in their own defensive third. It's been a lot of defending for Coastal. All of the attacking direction has been in favor of the Wildcats going toward the box. And I, when a goal comes, because it does seem like a when question. They've knocked on the door a couple of times. Right. It's been these outside backs, Miller and Screen, that get involved with the wingers and are able to put good service in. So that's Sarita who gets it forward to screen, nice flip. Gutman's got it on his left foot, looking for a touch, and maybe hit it one touch too many. I thought he was gonna let it go. 
but instead he tried to set it one more time and had it taken away. I think you're right on with that. It was just a little too much, a, a little too much dribbling there. Could have let it fly a little bit earlier. One touch too many. And as they've done the whole night, Wildcats get it right back. Try to go again. Defensive play there by Sorida. He held off Santos, yes, he the much bigger man. That's excellent positioning and shielding. Uh, if you've got kids at home that are watching and wondering, how do I teach someone to shield against a bigger opponent? That's a textbook example. Right? And now here come the Chanticleers. One of the few times trying to create offensively. Jones takes it back to Rez Pecky. Barron had his foot on it for a moment offensively. That hadn't happened much. And now Sarita coming the other way, trying to thread the needle. Gutman, he's on side. Got a step, leaves it for Bjorgelson, and he can't set it. Wow. Beautiful pass from the back. That was Sarita. Gutman was able to center. I thought he'd let it go again, but he left it for Bjorgelson. Watch the weight on that pass. That's perfect. It set Gutman up in stride. I love the decision to be unselfish. I'm surprised Bjorgelson didn't let it go one time there. I, I don't know why he tried to take a touch. He should have just poked it with that foot and put it on frame. That one, best chance so far for Kentucky. I tell you, I love the unselfishness of this team. I just wonder sometimes if they're maybe too unselfish. You know, I think those were two good opportunities in the last two trips that Gutman had to launch one himself. And Good. the thing about it is if you launch it from an angle, okay, cold night like this, there's every chance that it's going to pop back out, and then Bjorgelson is going to be there for the rebound. Exactly. Bjorgelson is already running in toward the goal, and he feasts on rebounds. Absolutely, especially when they're in the air. And Gutman, we know, can strike it with power on the ground. He can make it really difficult and make the goalkeeper have to get down, maybe pop that ball up. You said a good, unselfish play by Gutman, but... I wonder if he'll be thinking more about shooting the next time he's in that position. Chances are he's going to get another chance. And so you look at what the Cats have done here. Of course, there have been two times that they've gotten off to nine win starts. 2021, of course, they got off to that 10 win start. What else can you say about this program, especially these past five or six years? They've been one of the best teams in the country. It's just that, it seems like that hump they can't get over is getting to that college cup, getting past the quarterfinals. That's the next step for this team. They've launched themselves into the highest ranking in program history, had excellent starts. But you know, Johan Sedegren is confident with where they are, what they've done, where they're going. Their, their, consist, uh, their, their uh, ascension has been consistent. They haven't had any really big highs, really low lows. It has really been. It's been a consistent uphill fight for the Wildcats and just continuing to be steady and, you know, not panic when sometimes a game here or there goes wrong. That all his teams play with a, a confidence and a call. Here's Holstad. Left foot again. Grinning has it at the top of the box. Now kind of resets. Boy, and I think it's one of those deals where Gutman just got in a situation. I'm not sure he knew what to do with it. Still loose. Grinning. 
And it was saved by Batroni. And that one was another really excellent kind of half chance that popped up. I like keeping it on the ground, but if Grenning could have just gotten it to either side of the goalkeeper there, goalkeeper there talk about rebounds, right, maybe something's right. spilling out. You're something absolutely right. Happen. And the coastal bench wanting a call there that they didn't get. And Garcia Pascal, he handballed that. He went down and he thought he was going to get the free kick and <laughs> he just said play on either way. That was a kind of a strange play. Boy, and talk about somebody whose name we have not called since the open tonight. And that would be Garcia Pascal. He's hardly had a chance to touch the ball. It's been so rare they've been able to venture forward. But you know, that's all a talented forward needs is a touch or two. It doesn't right? take much. And this is the style of play that Coastal has, has played throughout the season. They're not gonna take any chances. They're not gonna get themselves out of position. But they're just gonna be patient and then see if they can make something happen. And very content with other teams possessing the ball. I thought I saw a stat. One of the teams they played against had 70% plus possession against Coastal, and they Screen. still ended up tying that. Able to chase it down, and fans don't like it, but that was an outstanding tackle by Marcelo Jones. Perfectly timed. That was all ball, and as a defender, you love to get in a tackle like that. Look at that, perfectly timed. And screen in a dangerous position again there, too. He had to make that tackle. So this will be a corner for the Wildcats. And every one of these corners have been taken. So it's a situation where you need the left-footed kicker to swing it in toward the goal mouth. Screen, who's been excellent on these set plays, hasn't had a chance to take one yet. Here's Maurice, top of the box, back corner! And just over the crossbar. Another great service in. And Grasso always lurking back there. He's a big target to look for. Him and Bjorgolfsson. Seems like you can just kind of heave it up to him in the box. And chances are they might get ahead to it. And that's who they were certainly trying to get it to. And a whistle. in a equipment malfunction or something. At first I thought maybe like shin guards or, or something was out of place. Screen but. goes down there as he's fouled by Alvaro Garcia Pascal. We're told that it may have been that they were talking about the keeper Batroni hanging on the crossbar after that shot. Screen to the top. And now here comes Coastal the other way. One of the first big runs they've had, and it ends at midfield. Rodriguez trying to punch it up to Bjorgelson. Love that idea, going direct. Had a little chance to break out there, the Wildcats and Rodriguez. He's had a few of those marauding runs forward. He's so skilled with the ball at his feet for a center back, and he almost had that timed up perfectly with Bjorgelson. Nicely played there by Garcia Pascal as they've started to get the ball to him more here in his second period. 
So Rida was beaten to the ball. And Santos got it. And this is what worries you about a team like Coastal. They've only gotten two shots the entire game. They were two shots early. They have yet to get one on goal. But all it takes is one, right? Exactly. And, and that's the thing that just scares you to death. And they've shown that they have really an expertise in holding teams to not scoring. Marshall, 0-0 zero, zero draw. West Virginia, 0-0 zero, zero draw. We saw West Virginia put three past UK in their most recent game. So we know Coastal can kind of hold on and absorb the pressure. It just takes that one mistake in the back or that one individual effort by one of their forward players and they could get that three points. That's something for the Wildcats, you just gotta keep that in your, the back of your mind. You're keeping all this possession. You've gotta make sure not to do anything too crazy. And you see the ranked matches right. there. That Charlotte game is such a strange outlier with the way they play. Now oh, here you go. First time on the far side. First time tonight out of seven. This will be the seventh. This will be the eighth corner kick. And this is the first one that Robert Screen has been able to take with his right foot, which will bend in toward the goal mount. So you've got Bjorgelson on the near post. You've got Grosso in the middle. And you've got Rodriguez on the back post. Little short and knocked out of there by Santos. And that ball. Over the crossbar again. And so substitutions now for Coastal, I believe. And indeed we will. 24. Alex Kinneteter checks in. As does 17, Danny Cabrera. You see Jones. And Alvaro Garcia Pascal come out. Santos controls. And Sarita got some help from Goodman to take it away. I was really impressed with Cabrera in that first half. He brought a little spark. He came off to the off the bench in that first half and made things uh, a little messy on that side, put in some good tackles and made some good runs forward. So Ryder won it in the air and got it to Holstead. Booted out of bounds, it goes to the Wildcats. Obviously, the postseason uh, important, but but what happens here if you're Kentucky and you finish number one? You host in the Sun Belt tournament as long as you're still alive. I think a win tonight really puts them in that pole position. It's still really close in those standings right now, and another draw. You allow a team like Marshall to catch up and maybe leapfrog you, and then there's teams right in behind them too that have that opportunity. You can't. Can't afford a ton of draws in a row like they've seen. Most schools have only three regular season matches left after tonight. Here's screen. There's the center and nobody home. And I've got to tell you, I, I think that Coastal has done a nice job of marking Bjorgelson tonight too. And it's Peter Durrell who's done most of that. Right there in a the box, there's Bjorgelson, and there's Durrell to kick it away. Durrell has been tasked with that throughout the night. Screen, he's got some room now. Can he make something happen? Maurice looking to settle. Holstad with a nice service. 
And it was Petroni who got it before Grenning. And for Bjorgelsen, to your point about them doing a nice job so far, it's just tough because not only do you have Durrell, but when they settle back in their shape, they've got two other center backs yeah. that can help deal with them. There's just so many bodies with him in the box. Done a good job handing him off and not allowing him in behind the back line. Trying to punch it up front. And once again, Grasso has played really well back there again tonight. I mean, there have been a lot of guys that have played well this year, but Grasso and Rodriguez, their, their consistency, you know, you hear that thing about coaches wanting to get the same thing every night. They know what they're going to get from those two. And with center backs, you really want to find those two guys that you never have to sub off that will be your rocks in the back. And not only are they good defensively, but they're so important to the team's attack and see how the ball rotates through. Oh, yeah. And they're able to play the long ball effectively as well, both of them. They're both offensive weapons on set pieces and when they get a breakaway. I was so impressed with Grosseau's goal against West Virginia. That was, most strikers aren't gonna strike one like that. Oh, a little back heel there. Gutman got it just a bit too far for Rodriguez. And it'll be a goal kick. Uh, the flag went up, excuse me. It'll be an offsides against Kentucky. And there you see the Chanticleer players raising their hand. It was a little closer than I first thought. I thought Rodriguez was a few fair steps offside, but actually timed that pretty well. And just as we're talking about the center backs being able to attack, he goes on one of those other yep. runs and gives them another option in the box. Holstad and Maurice challenging. And what an excellent defensive job. Screen in the back, Gutman in the front. seen too many chances for Max Miller to attack on this side no. yet. They go far side to Maurice and he can't run it down. And you're right. They got it to Miller a lot in the first half. They have not gotten it to him much over there on the far side here in period number two. Seemed like they've really liked this right side and it's been working well for him. We've seen Gutman get in the box and be dangerous a couple of times and create the most dangerous chances for the Wildcats. You can't blame them for keeping it on the side, but it'd be nice to see him switch the point of attack and try a little something different. Rodriguez right there, coming up on the 65th minute. Typically here in the next five minutes is when Johan Sedegren tries to get Itor Bjorgelsen about 10 minutes worth of rest for the final charge. Brennan Creek comes in to replace Martin Sarita. And so the referee, Soren Socia, stops the clock while Bjorgelsen ties his shoes Normally wouldn't do that, but on this cool night, Bjorgelsen had to take off his gloves to tie his shoes. And if you don't have gloves on, it's gonna be hard to retie those laces. Yes. <laughs> Golly. Kind of an interesting look. Maurice is gonna drop back more as a holding mid. Yep. And Creek comes on and plays in that attacking mid role, or maybe even a almost a 4-4-2 shape up there with Bjorgelsen. That ball shoots through, and it'll be a goal kick. And Rodriguez getting that license to rumble forward again, though. And Coastal, that, that is something interesting about this team, and we talk about all the international flavor for this Kentucky team. The shot to clears, they've got a lot of international oh, yeah. players as well. Oh, and that's a hard knock taken by Holstad. Slow to get up on that one. In the cold, it's, you can sometimes kind of numb it throughout the game, and then you get up the next morning, and you're like, wow, that one hurt a lot worse than I thought. Right. 
as we said, game time temperature was 50. So here in 90 minutes, it's dropped down to 45. Feels like 41. Good man! Oh my gosh! Oh, did he have the angle and we've seen him score on that before. And he just pulls it wide of the far post. And he's certainly going for goal here. He's shooting this all the way. Grenning almost sneaks in to get it anyway. Oh, look how close this one is. There's no question that was a shot, but it could have easily gone in or gone off the foot of Grenning. And that's one of those you put across, and it's even got a chance to hit a defender and cause sure. your own goal. It just hits so sharply. That's a great bit of skill again from Gutman. It's all the dangerous attacks have really come from him so far. Creek got that ball back, and one thing I'm noticing is Santos in the midfield beginning to play much more physically for Coastal Carolina. Screen can't get to this one as he's blocked off by Bach. Santos really hassling the defenders because Rodriguez and Grasso have had so much time to play the ball. So Santos just trying to remind them that, hey, I'm right here and Holstad as well. Getting taken out a couple minutes ago. Jones checks back in for Coastal to replace Cabrera. Jones, one of those players from England. It's so interesting to me bringing in all those international guys and then seeing how it gels. And for Coastal, clearly, they're all bought into the system and play really well together. Nicely done as they get it to Bjorgelson. And now a whole stat. There's Rodriguez, as we talked about, way up from his center back position. Little punch. Bjorgelson kind of posting up like a center there. And they'll try to play it through him again. Screen. Now with a service. And that one stopped nicely. Boy, those big guys back there have played well. Holstad tries to punch it in. But that last shot was stopped again by Bach. A wall of green when services come into the box. They've been very disciplined and give a lot of credit. You mentioned Durrell. He has commanded that back line and made sure he's in the middle of everything, that they don't get too, too far caught out on any of these crosses that come in. Jorgelson has just not, not been able to connect with a lot up there either. Back it goes to Moles. I, I mean, the last, I obviously have to go back and look at the play-by-play. -play. Let's see if I can do that without losing my place. But I'm telling you, the last shot by Coastal, I mean, had to be a long time ago. Jorgelson can't turn, and they boot it out of bounds. Feels like the past 20 minutes, all of the possession has been in the Wildcats attacking third. And we saw him create so many chances in the first half off of crosses. And it, it seems, again, it seems like it should be coming for the Wildcats. Eventually, one of these will slip through. Just according to my quick glance, he got to make sure. Yes, yeah, so Barian. Got a shot at the 6.48 mark. And then the last Carolina shot came by Marcelo Jones at the 10.18 mark. And here we are coming up on the 70th minute. Yeah, Moles has not had much to do no. back there. And you know, you can, it, we, we've talked about how they've held so many teams scoreless. As much as you're confident in your defense, you don't want to be defending that much throughout the game. 
Bjorgelsen did the post up that time. Got a good shot off on the turn, but you can see his frustration as he just couldn't get it framed up. That's an incredible piece of technique there. Flicking it up and then having the volley close enough from that type of strike. He's got to turn his entire body around. We know he's capable of that. Oh, and a little a little grab on the back of the neck there by Barone. I think they were talking to each other a little bit there. Bjorgelsen is not afraid to talk. And he can pray, play Seven through some talk. If it were me, I would probably not be talking to Bjorgelsen. He, he can back it up with his play and his physicality. He is not fun to be shoulder to shoulder against up there. So now we're in the 71st minute. And like I said, typically, typically, this is where Johan Sedegren tries to get Jorgelsen some rest. But the fact that they desperately would love to get the three might be an indication as to why he's still in there. Looks back out the screen, and now Grasso resets with that Kentucky line really pushed up. Yeah, interesting to see Holstad. Grinning let one go, and it was blocked. Boy, somebody's got a whole handful of Bjorgelson in the box. And there's no whistle. Yeah, and that's something as a forward, it gets so frustrating throughout the game. You're constantly being held, and a lot of it's well, off I mean, the that, ball. That was two handfuls of yeah. hell. And a lot, a, a lot of it's not directly involved in the play, so the referee's watching Watch Grenning. So he's got him around yeah, the shoulders. Yep. Well, oh, there's a sure grab. Jorgelson kind of, kind of hooked his arm around there as well. Yeah. So I will give referee Storin Sochia the benefit of the doubt there. Two big old boys just laying on top of each other. Yeah. Goodman going to the back post and nobody home. Again, not a bad look. The cross, the right idea. If someone is getting in there, I think Bjorgelsen and Grenning are saying, hey, Grenning, get, get, get into that back post there. It's one thing for the Wildcats. We were talking earlier today on the phone before we got over here. I mean, Grenning has been feasting in terms of number of shots. And now, the yellow card has been assessed to Joey Batroni, the keeper for Coastal. And I think it was for taking too much time. Yeah, just delaying the play. <laughs> Look at this. Slowly rolls it over to the other side. He needs a better position. That's that's just time wasting there. And I, he knows that. I think everybody and knows And you got to believe that the referee yelled something at him. Yeah. Right there's Bjorgelsen, my goodness. What a delivery from Holstad. And once again, those center backs for Coastal were in perfect position. That one was much better from Holstad. We've seen a few of his crosses go in. Boy, and now look at Moles all the way out. As Rodriguez got his feet crossed up and fell, Moles came way out of the box. And there's a shot from distance and Moles nearly got caught off his line too far. Goodness and, gracious. And that one coming from the player who was talking a little smack with Bjorgelsen before. That was a nice shot from outside. I really like the idea. You know the keeper was out. Just test him from there. And that's the biggest save Moles has had to make. Lucia Barron, who you talked about as we started this second period. He's done such a great job defensively, but that was nearly the shot that broke a nil-nil tie. Here's Yartenson with the corner. And Holstad now trying to bring it the other way for the Wildcats. Gutman's got a head of steam. There's our guy Grenning. And that's gotta be a takedown. That's right outside the box. It's gotta be a yellow. That's going to go against 24, Luke Makula. Great 
ball here. Look at this ball from Gutman. Perfect right on Grenning. The first touch brilliant. And then easy shirt pull. That's an easy yellow card for the referee there. I mean, you do that if you're in college football, right? Because it's only 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. Right. Saves you a touchdown. I mean, kind NFL, of the same idea. It goes to the spot, right? Yeah. And I mean, I mean, you've coached. I mean, I guess there are situations where it makes sense to do that. But now, is it going to be Marie's with the left foot? Or is it going to be screen with the right? If Petroni stays over on that far side, I think it might be Maurice who tries to hook it into this near side over the wall. Yeah, either way, I think up and over the wall with the keeper's positioning here. But the key thing is, even if it goes into the wall, like a rebound on a missed free throw late in the game, he who watches loses. Yep. And if they put it on frame, goalkeeper saves, you better believe there's going to be a lot of big bodies crashing. Screen runs past it. There's Maurice. That's exactly what he was trying to do. And just got under it too much. And that's the type of position that Maurice loves to be in. That time, just not getting enough dip on it. And I'm sure for Marie's having to run this entire game and have a player man mark you the entire time has been a bit frustrating as well. He hasn't been on the ball as much as we're used to seeing. And again, Erickson, who's played so well in the midfield, out tonight, unavailable. They think that he'll be back next game as the whistle is blown, and that's going to be a handball against Barron. So it looks like on this cool night tonight, and I don't understand what these signals are. I think the referee just said, hey, you've got to wait for my whistle to take the free kick. That was kind of strange. But what I had started to say, it looks like on this cool night, Jorgelson is not going to get that break. And that shows you the importance of this, and I think it also shows you that he's recovered fully from that injury that kept him out for a couple of games. They try to punch it down to Creek. He's cut off for a moment. Luke Makula. That was the first time we've seen Coastal press up high on the field. Kentucky able to break it. You see Makula, and there you see Creek. Yep, off of Creek there. And now the referee going over to check with his linesman here on the near side. As Peter Durrell was getting more than a little agitated back there. And behind the play, there's a foul against the Wildcats. And now the clock is stopped. As referee begins watching time as we're in the 76th minute. So that foul was committed on Kenneteter. So there you see five unbeaten teams in collegiate soccer. Of course, Kentucky played Dayton to a draw here a week ago. And Washington with just that one draw against 12 wins. Outstanding season so far for Washington. I think Rodriguez had a little bit of shoulder or an elbow. And now there's gonna be Oh, he's given like three cards. He just counted off who the guys were. And that's the international soccer reaction. What, me? And the problem was that there were players that were outside of the coach's box. I mean, they were on the sideline of the field. Way I don't know if we close. got that replay, but that's one of the darndest things I've seen. Yeah. 
I used to be a basketball official and a baseball umpire. But that is Soren Socha, who went one, two, three, and then held up the card, did all of them, and got the card. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if that's three for one for each of those players, or if that's no, no, just no, like this is for the bench, for, now right? Watch here, watch here. So they didn't like it, okay? And then they go over toward the bench, and he's getting the business from the bench, and here he comes. Watch this. And he's getting ready to pull the trigger. And watch, <laughs> let it go. Oh! Uh, he goes one, two, three. Yep, he pointed him out. Yes, he did. I like it. Rapid fire. Boy, and there's one of the few miscues we have seen Rodriguez make in forever. As he just peeked up to see where he wanted to go with that ball. And it just went out of bounds. Coastal with a little more momentum in these past few minutes, you know, getting forward a little bit more than we've seen. Possession not going all in the Wildcats' favor. I think they kind of... And I'm not saying they've done anything dirty or anything, yeah. but as they have gotten more physical, they've caused Kentucky more problems. Mm -hmm. Possession has been a lot harder for Kentucky in these past few minutes. And like you said, a lot of physical play. They're taking them out of the element a little bit. 78 minutes now gone by. Now Rodriguez up and attacking offensively, trying to turn the corner. And you know, normally at a point in a match like this, I don't think you'd see Rodriguez that far up. As Grosso is near midfield. Yeah, Grosso and Holstad basically playing as the as two defenders near the center midline and letting Rodriguez get up. Johan Sedergren would definitely love to get three here. That ball gets through, and again, it's Grosso. <laughs> A nice, nice play. So the Cats step out of conference. They go to Indiana this weekend. And they come back home on the 28th to take on Old Dominion. And then the regular season finale on November 1st at South Carolina. As we mentioned at the start of the broadcast, Kentucky on top of the table. Three points clear, only three from Marshall. That Old Dominion team, as we've seen, very scrappy. They can get a win against a talented team. They upset Marshall just this past weekend. A nice step in there by Coastal to keep the Cats from advancing beyond midfield. Rodriguez and Screen trying to start things. And they create a little room for Maurice who gets it back. Gutman. He was knocked off the ball on a nice play by Bach. Here come the Cats on the far side. Miller with a touch. Branning. And again, it's knocked away. That looked like McCula. And now Gutman far side. Going to the back post again. And that was Grenning flying in, who couldn't get ahead on it. And that was the connection they missed before. Grenning didn't make that back post run. Gutman floated it to the same spot. Uh, that, that could be a recipe for a goal here at the later stages. Draw that one up again. Coming up on the 81st minute in this scoreless affair. Kentucky has outshot Coastal 11 to three. Now the Wildcats looking to make something happen offensively as there's timeout for an injury. Ben Damji looking to come in at his first opportunity. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a cramp at this point in the game. A few minutes is a long time to play. Can't tell who that is, but... So there you see that conference table again. So the Cats have games left with South Carolina and Old Dominion in conference. And Old Dominion, we're told, is leading in the 81st minute. 
over South Carolina. So if the Monarchs were to get three tonight, look what that does to that situation. Yeah, coming in and getting a chance to play against Kentucky and maybe at that point, if Kentucky draws here, Old Dominion gets that win. Old Dominion could potentially leapfrog them in the standings. And if Marshall continues playing well. So it's, this is a game you need the three points. Lots you don't want to draw the this. last two weeks. And here's Cabrera coming back in. I think he was one of the guys who got dinged on the sideline for arguing. And so the Cats looking for some more offense. They bring Creek out, and Ben Damji, who has a way of finding the goal, comes in. And Itor Jorgensen comes off the pitch. He's replaced by Cabrera. Clock is stopped at 81.01, and now it runs again. I like Creek coming on in. Yeah, I should say Damji coming on and playing underneath Bjorgelson, maybe take away some of that pressure from some of those center backs that have marked him up so well. What they can do is both of those guys are big and strong enough right. where they can both post up. So then somebody's got to make a decision about who they cover. And as you said, it might very well keep them from double teaming one or the other. They've done a great job passing Bjorgelson off from one center back to the other, but when you've got that other guy to worry about, it doesn't make it as easy to make that decision. Cool night, and it's been a great crowd here at the Bell. They've been into this one from the start and trying to drag these Wildcats across the finish line. Grasso goes across the way. That's Miller. When you see just how far and how content Coastal is to drop back. No pressure on the Cats at all at the mid. There you see Bjorgelson looking to turn. Now can he get some help? Nice chip in. Holstad couldn't find a friendly hit. And once again, the Coastal defenders win one in the air. It's the second time Holstad has put in a really good floated ball towards that back post. They go to Bjorgelson again. There's Holstad one more time. Grinning on the far side, and he couldn't square it up. But what has become apparent in the last couple of trips down is that Bjorgelson has finally been able to get open. Bjorgelson, even when he hasn't, he's drawing the defenders to him, and then it's that 1v1 on the back post. Grinning has had this a couple of times now. He's in that position, holding him off. That's a really tough technique to hit it from there, though. Good service in from Holstad as well. They keep dropping back to him. Bjorgelson kind of peeling off, and then Holstad just floating it towards that back post. Nice ball from Damji to start things. Dan, uh, excuse me. Screen will inbound for the Wildcats as we're into the 83rd minute at the 83-30 mark. That guy, Peter Durrell, has had a huge game for Coastal. Really the glue in the middle of the defense, physically marked with Bjorgelsen for much of the game. Yeah, you've got to give him a lot of credit. No whistle on the far side as Grenning went down. Damji with a steal. Gutman's open in the slot on his right foot. Oh my goodness, what a play. Is that Durrell again? He's still down on the pitch. I think it was. Oh my gosh, that guy <laughs> has been a one-man wall. Watch the timing. You've got to get it right. Takes one in the stomach from Gutman. What a great buildup from the Wildcats again, but. Excellent pass. And Gutman had a good look. But now you've got Damji, you've got Rodriguez, and you've got Bjorgelson. Maurice with a left foot to the back post. Yeah, look at all the traffic in that six yard box. Miller keeps it in and he's brought down from behind and that'll be a foul against Cabrera. 
And now there's going to be another yellow card issued against Coastal. And that was Emil Respecki, who wasn't in the play. I think they might have got Cabrera with I don't think that was Cabrera. I, I mean, he walked right over to Respecki. Yeah, he turned. That ball is headed and it goes wide. One, two, three, four, five. Yellows against. So here's what's happened. There, that ball goes wide. So five yellows against Coastal. One against Casper Grenning early at the 543 mark. And no Santos. Checks in for Marcelo Jones. As we've got less than five minutes to play. Damn G, shooting it up there for Gutman. Keeper calls everybody off, and Batroni takes control. You know what, I think another reason that Kentucky hasn't been able to get a goal, their shots they've gotten off these crosses, they haven't been, they haven't been on frame. They've been off frame. If they can get one of these headers toward the goal, maybe make the goalie spill it, you got that chance for a rebound. We haven't seen a lot of rebound opportunities for this team. So, so technically, Kentucky has 14 shots, and there are three saves for the Chanticleers. Now, I'm not enough of a soccer guy to know whether it's a save if a defender keeps it from going in or not. But even with those three saves, the guys in front of Batroni have played spectacularly. Absolutely. They have been in front of it. Here's Rodriguez trying to turn it in front. Bjorgelson couldn't get turned. It was right to him. And if he had gotten turned, he could have either one time or set it. That one came in so fast, it was hard to get his hips there. And tried to turn it and it hit him about the knee. Yep. Screen trying to serve it in. And once again, there's one of those center backs. Who was it this time? I think that was Kenneth Teeter, 24. It's like artillery shelling a bunker. The green wall is consistently getting in front of these services and heading them away. Cats need to not rush, but they need to get going. And now there is a player down on the field and the clock will be stopped. That's Danny Cabrera. Way up at the top of the box. And I mean, that's a pretty heavily taped knee that he's been trying to play yep. with. And I did not see what happened behind the play. This is kind of a little timeout for you if you're Kentucky to regroup and talk about the service in here off the corner kick. Or, depending on your perspective, it might be a time for Coastal to set their defense and they trade Cabrera, who's not very big, for Chartinson, who obviously is a much bigger defender on this corner. Got Santos front post. You've got to get it over him, and that's a big target to overcome. Jorgelson right in the middle. Goes toward him, and it's booted away. And that was Santos, who, like you said, is such a big target. But he got that one with his feet without leaving the ground. Now Kentucky plays it short. Miller to the back post, and again it's knocked away, it was Santos. Shot right on goal! That was grinning far side to the near post, and it was right on frame. I much prefer that type of shot though. Keep it, get something on frame to keep this keeper honest, and all those defenders in front can sometimes act as a screen, and the keeper might not see it till the last second. Could be a rebound, could be anything. Now past the 88th minute. 
And Moles will quickly try to play it forward. And the Cats trying to see if after 89 minutes of frustration, they can make something happen in the final 60 or so seconds. Corner turned and that's gonna be, referee says a goal kick and not a corner kick. And that will carry us in to the final minute. Well, that's a tough one, give away from the goal kick. I think Miller thought he might have won the corner there. He heard just one of those guttural yells. And that came from Johan Sedegren, who is expressing his frustration. One last look here for Kentucky. Final 30 seconds, they try to go to Gutman. Screen keeps it in. Inside 30 seconds, here's Gutman who can't center. Screen had it knocked off the head of a defender. And now the final 15. Grosso to Maurice. Trying to put it on his left foot. And once again, a coastal defender knocks it away. Has to be one of the most frustrating nights of the year for the Wildcats and Johan Sedegren. They have 15 shots. They put four on goal. They had a blue million shots that were knocked away by coastal center backs. And the Chanticleers get two shots in the first half, one shot in the second half. And for them and for Kentucky, it's another draw. So now we've got the updated Sunbelt Conference standings. And there you see Kentucky now with 12 points. Old Dominion got that win, so they get the three, and they move up into second over Marshall. And then Coastal now, they get to five points. So Josh, it was just one of those nights. You, you've got to credit how hard Kentucky played. You've got to credit how hard and how well the defense of Coastal played. They came in and got the result they wanted away from home. The draw, they repelled so many attacks from Kentucky. I think the player for the, uh, of the game for them, Peter Durrell, you called his name a fair few times in that last 20 minutes all over the pitch. And Kentucky will be disappointed. Coastal, I think they're going to be pretty ecstatic with that draw. I, I would think they would be. And so, nonetheless, it is a 